shouldn't be super difficult. We're going to do quite a bit of synthetic division. That's the shortcut that you guys learned on Tuesday. So look at the top. A factor is a term that divides evenly. Okay, you can fill in the blank there. Factors always divide evenly. So for example, can 12 divide evenly by 3? Yeah. Then 3 is a factor. Can 12 divide by 5? 5 is not a factor, okay? So the factor theorem says that a number or algebraic expression is a factor if it has a remainder of 0. So look at number 1. It says determine if x minus 3 is a factor of this guy. Well, if I want to know if it's a factor, I'm going to use the short version. Thank you. You could do long division if you just really feel like it, but synthetic is shorter. So if I want to divide by x minus 3, what do I put in the box? A plus 3. Okay, then what do I do from there? I list out each of my coefficients. So it's a 1x to the 3 minus 4x plus 2 plus 3. Then I draw my line in. First number always carries down. So I bring my 1 down and then I multiply by the box. What's 1 times 3? What's negative 4 plus 3? Negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. What's 2 minus 3? Then I do negative 1 times 3. What do I get? Negative 3. Remainder is 0. Okay, then my question is x minus 3 is a factor. I circled is, not is not. Okay, because the remainder was 0. Now, out of what is left over, you can completely factor. This is what I mean by that. My original expression, this guy, can be rewritten like this. Remember how if this is an x3, this starts as an x2? Do you remember that? So I'd have x2 minus x minus 1. And then what's left over from there, I also had an x minus 3. Okay? Then from there, you would try to t-chart what is left over if you can. So let's set up our t here. Okay, remember, I have a negative 1 at the top of my chart. What's the only way to times to get 1? 1 and 1. Okay, can either one of those subtract to give me a 1 left over? 1 minus 1. No, then that is done. So that one is prime. That means that you can't break it up. But if you could, you can't break it up more. So that means that that would be your final answer. But if you can break it up, then you should do it, and the next example will break down. Mm-hmm. Okay, so look at number two. Determine if x minus 1 is a factor of the expression. What do I do first? Put a 1 in the box, positive 1. Then I list out all my factors. So I have a 1x cubed, a 9x squared, a 15x, and a negative 25. Now, if it's going to be a factor, what should my remainder be? One. I mean zero. zero. So I carry down my first column is a 1. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. And then 9 plus 1 gives me 10. Then I do 10 times 1 is... 10, then I add it with the 15, I get 25. 25 times 1, we get 25. Combine that last column, my remainder is 0. So I would put x minus 1 is a factor because the remainder was 0. Then I'm going to rewrite it as a product. So I have my x minus 1 was my first factor. And then I'm going to write my answer that comes from right here. Now if it started off as an x cubed, where does the answer start off as? So a 1x squared plus a 10x plus a 25. 
And then what I want to do if I'm going to factor completely is see, can this part t-chart one more time? That's what we learned last week. So set your chart up over here. Remember, AC goes at the top. My A is a 1. My B is a 10. My C is a 25. What's 1 times 25? 25. What are my factors? 5 and 5. Now, you could also put 1 times 25 on the list, but that doesn't add to the right thing. In the middle, I want it to be a 10. So 5x and 5x are going to be my two middle guys. So remember, my 10x splits up into a 5 and a 5. Then I look for my common term. My first guys can both lose an x. What can my second guys both lose? A 5. Yeah. So then I have x in the front. x plus 5 is going to be what's left over. Then out of my second two guys, I have a 5 getting pulled out. What's left over from this guy? 5x divided by 5 is an x. 25 divided by 5 is a 5. And then remember, I should have written a little bit smaller, but if these guys match, you can pull that term out. So I'm going to have an x plus 5 here. And then what are my leftover guys? Another x plus 5. Now, what did I already pull out before that? x minus 1. So that would be completely factored. That I can break down the first term and then break down what's left over. What did you say, Seth? Just put x by square minus x. You could also have written it like this. Yeah, x minus 1 and then x plus 5 squared. That would have been fine too. Either or is fine. They're both good. Make sense? Okay, one more like that. What are we putting in the box if we're dividing by x plus 4? A negative 4. So I have a 1x cubed, a 4x squared, a negative 9, and then a negative 36. So my 1 carries down. What's 1 times negative 4? Then combine that next column. 4 minus 4 is 0. What is 0 times anything? 0 and then negative 9 and 0 makes negative 9. Then negative 9 times negative 4, what do we get there? Add those guys together, we get 0. So, if my remainder is 0, is it a factor, yes or no? Yes. X plus 4 is a factor because the remainder was 0. Then from there, I'm going to write it as a product, and I'm going to see if I can break down the second chunk. So, X plus 4 was my first factor. What is left over from my synthetic division? Okay, X squared plus how many X's? Okay, zero x's and then a minus nine. Now, if there's a zero x, do I have to really write that term? No. no. So I'm going to write it like this. x squared minus nine. And I'm going to basically just forget the zero from the middle. Now, that's one of your specials you learned on Friday. Do you remember? Uh-huh, that's a perfect square. So I'm going to square root both of those guys. Square root of x squared is x squared of 9 is 3. So it can break up into a plus 3 and a minus 3. And then what did I already have in the front? The x plus 4. So once you divide the first term out, what's left over is either a t-chart or one of those special guys. Okay? All right, flip over to the back. So that's the factor theorem, that if your remainder is zero, it's a factor. Okay, flip over to the other side. Okay, next one says, is x minus 3 a factor? What are we putting in the box? Three, positive. positive 3. Okay, what's our first term here? 1, one negative 2x two. Two squared minus 4x plus 5. First guy comes down, what do we get? 
1. Then 1 times 3 is 3. It's a positive 3. Add that to negative 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Add that to negative 4. We get... Okay, and then last one, we're going to do negative 1 times 3 is minus 3. And then 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay, is it a factor? No. Okay, now, I want you to find f of 3 right next to it. We're going to do it without a calculator. Okay, so first term, I would have f of 3. That just means plug in 3. Uh, to the big guy, to this one. Okay, so I have 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 5. Okay, so 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3 again. What's 3 times 3? 9 times 1 more 3? That's a 27 minus... Okay, then follow PEMDAS. i got to do my exponent first. What's 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. 9, and then what's 9 times 2? 18. Minus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put these two guys together. If they're both negative, what's negative 18 minus 12 more? Minus 30. And then what's 27 minus 30? How many is that? Negative, Negative 3 plus 5. What do we get? 2. Two. Okay, what do you notice about the remainder when I divided and the answer when I plugged it in? They both came out to be 2. Okay? We're going to do it one more time and see if that's always true. Hint, it is. Okay, number five. What are we putting in the box if we want to divide by x plus two? A minus two. So I'm going to start with... Oh, it's missing a term. What term is it missing? Okay, so I'm going to put right here, I need a plus zero x cubed. Okay, you cannot skip from a fourth to a second without writing in a zero. So three x to the fourth, zero x to the three, Negative 8x to the 2, 11 and plus 1. First term comes down, what is it? 3. 3 times the box. 3 times negative 2 is? Negative 6. 0 minus 6 is? Negative 6. Multiply negative 6 by negative 2, what do we get there? Okay, what's negative 12 plus, or I'm sorry, I said that wrong, 12 minus 8? Four. 4 left over. Then 4 times negative 2 is? 11 minus 8 is? 3. 3 times negative 2 is? And 1 minus 6 is? Negative 5. That's my remainder. Did it divide evenly? No. It is not a factor. Okay, but if it comes out to not be a factor, then let's plug it in and see if we get a matching answer. This one we'll do in the calculator. So it'll be 3 times negative 2 to the 4th, 8 times negative 2 squared, 11 times negative 2, plus 1. Now, if you wanted to write in the 0, fine, you can. But remember that if I put a 0 in front of it, it's going to cross out anyway. Okay, so we'll shortcut this one since it's a little bit longer. Okay, 3 times negative 2. Can I type it in like this? Up to the 4th like that? Okay, that's going to be wrong. You have to use parentheses if your base is negative. So I'm going to come over here, put a parentheses in on both sides. So 3 times negative 2 to the 4th minus 8 times negative 2 squared plus 11 times negative 2, and then plus 1. Okay, my answer comes out to be negative 5. What do you notice about your remainder and your answer? Okay, they're the same. So, last one. 
x to the fifth plus 30, what are we putting in the box? Negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, how many zeros are we going to have to write in? 3. Okay, so I'm going to have 1x to the fifth. How many x's to the fourth? 0. How many x's to the three? 0. How many x's to the two? 0. How many x's to the one? 0. Zero and then a 30. So be careful on that. Okay, if I have 5, I need x4, x3, x2, and x1 to all be zeroed out. Carry that first guy down, what do you get? Negative. I mean one. 1. 1 times negative 2 is? Negative 2. Negative 2. 0 minus 2 gives me minus 2. Then I times by what's in the box. Okay, I get a 4. 0 plus 4 is? 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Combine that guy up. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is a plus 16. Add that with 0. The 16 comes down. Last column. 16 times negative 2 is? Negative 32. Combine that with 30. Negative 2 left over. That's your remainder. Now, if I wanted to plug in negative 2 by hand, okay, which you have a calculator, you do negative 2 to the 5th plus 30. Okay, well, let's count out. Negative 2 times itself 5 times. What's negative 2 times negative 2? 4. 4 times negative 2? 8. Negative 8. Times negative 2? 16. Positive 16 times negative 2 again? Negative 32 plus 30? Negative 2. So the other theorem, you learned the factor theorem. That's where you divide by 0. It's a factor. The other theorem down here is the remainder theorem. It says when you divide f of x by x minus c, then that's going to be the answer. It'll equal the remainder. So if I want to know f of 2, I'm going to divide synthetically, and that remainder is also going to be my answer. They're always going to match each other. Okay? Got it? Okay, you got some homework on your desk. Does anyone need to see? Do y'all want to see your tests? Nope. Mm, okay. All right. Do y'all feel like if I gave you a test on this, like division and stuff, you could do better? Well, it'd be over factoring synthetic division. Just what we've done since your test. I think that's probably what we're going to do. So you have at least one more test grade to cancel that other one out a little bit. Huh? You have papers that you haven't turned in? Are, are they the ones you turned in on Friday? Okay, I haven't graded that stack from Friday yet. Um, then just turn it in and I'll give it back to you the next day. Instead of, because sometimes y'all show me and then someone else asks me something. I don't mark you have it. Lunch? What lunch do you have? Um, no, because I have a class. If you had, if your teacher would let you come during a lunch, I don't know what you have fourth. But if it's like college transitions, no. What is it? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but if you ever aren't doing anything, I have a lunch, and I would tutor you during my lunch. Because like I can't really do like video, like person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to be here in the morning tomorrow at like 8.30 if that helps. Huh? Oh, I'm off first period. Mm-hmm. Could you do first tomorrow? I can try. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I'm always in here just working on stuff first period. Can I also take the test if I'm ready? Oh, can I show you my homework for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, just go put it in the folder. I didn't do all of it because I have questions. Okay, then yeah, let's get it done. Yes, Sam. Mm-hmm, sure.